Uh, let me begin by saying, um, with regard to my trip to Sudan, which took place from November 15th to the 22nd, um, I have to thank uh, the government of uh, Sudan for agreeing to let me come on short notice, UNMES and UNICEF uh, for all making all the logistical arrangements there. And I must say I traveled with uh, the head of child protection of UNICEF so that we could also assess the programmatic response uh, in, in situations uh, involving children. The purpose of the visit was to assess firsthand the situation uh, in Sudan uh, since my last visit of 2007 and to determine the progress and implementation of recommend resolution 1612 and now 1882, as well as the conclusions and recommendations of the Security Council Working Group. Uh, the purpose was to support the advocacy efforts of child protection actors and to engage in high-level dialogue with national authorities as well as uh, dialogue with non-state actors. Um, I visited Khartoum, North Darfur, West Darfur, Juba, Yambio, Bor, um, and uh, I also met with government leaders, NGOs, United Nations agencies, and uh, sometimes children. As you know, the issues that concern the Security Council Working Group in Sudan are the recruitment and use of child soldiers, as you know, uh, the Secretary General's list on children and armed conflict that goes to the Security Council every year, listing parties that recruit and use children, practically all the parties in Sudan, signatories, non-signatories in the government of Sudan, are on that list. So this was very important. That was why this issue was of high concern. Rape and sexual violence, uh, killing and maiming of children, especially in recent tribal conflicts, targeting humanitarian workers and the denial of humanitarian access, the combating of impunity. And in addition, there were some other issues of concern, the protection of children in recent intertribal conflicts in the South, the question of capital punishment for children, uh, the cross-border violence of the LRA, and the need for sustainable reintegration programs for former child soldiers. The commitments we got during this visit, which we hope all parties will, uh, will stand by, was first we managed uh, to sign an action plan with the SPLA. It calls for the release of all children. They allow for the verification of that release, giving the UN access to their military centers and training camps, and the reintegration of such children uh, in a, in a, uh, in, uh, through, with the help of the government and UNICEF. We also, uh, uh, some signatories to the Darfur peace process, agreed to begin dialogue for such action plans. Uh, that is the SLA Free Will, the Jam Peace Wing, and the SLA Abdul Ghazim. Uh, Mr. Mini Minawi uh, has opened his camps uh, to the UN uh, for, to see if there are any children, so that was also a part of that process. The Sudanese government also indicated to us a willingness to enter into uh, a discussion for an action plan so that they can be listed. Those discussions are now ongoing. Besides action plans, we got commitments from religious leaders in Darfur. Um, uh, it was uh, religious leaders, many of them uh, who, who, uh, who told us that they would use the sermons from the mosques to uh, aid in the campaign against recruitment of child soldiers. About 800 mocks will be involved in that campaign. Uh, we also got a commitment from the UPDF. Uh, as we went to Yambio, we went, visited them in the camp. The, the UPDF Army uh, Chief of Staff was visiting uh, the uh, Yambio um, district. And uh, what we wanted is as they fight the LRA and children are taken by the UPDF, a protocol for their release so that they release hopefully within 24 hours to the Ministry of, uh, of uh, Welfare as well as to UNICEF. We also got a commitment from the government of Sudan, from the Minister of Justice himself, that they will not execute any children, that they would not, even if they are sentenced, they will not be executed. Uh, and finally, we ourselves made a commitment, that is our office and the UNICEF, that we will do our best to raise funding so that there will be sustainable reintegration programs for all the children that will be released from these many action plans. I visited Sudan two years ago, and I must say since then there have been uh, quite a bit of progress. I think the first progress is that there seems to be an acceptance of international standards across a large cross-section of people. 
uh, both in government and outside, and a willingness to talk about many of these problems. Uh, this is particularly true when it comes to women's uh, violence against women and child's rights. There has been a formation of a child, family and child protection units in, the North, uh, in North um, Sudan. I visited one of these units, and I must say that they were, uh, seemed very effective uh, in the areas that they operate. Uh, there is also a draft national policy on violence against women that is being drafted and which hopefully will be adopted soon. There's a Child Act uh, in the state level that have been passed, but the Federal Act um, is also, uh, one hopes, will be adopted soon, though there are certain deletions that we are concerned about. Uh, what is needed is the framework now exists, the issue is now implementation. But at least two years ago when I went, well, one couldn't even talk about these issues. So that in that sense, uh, it's a, it is a step forward. And even within the armed forces of Sudan, there's now a child's p child protection uh, unit uh, whose purpose is to ensure that children are not being recruited. Despite this progress, I must say that, of course, there's a great deal of challenges that exist. Uh, there are still a number of large children associated with armed groups, well, and there are different realities. I met with um, the SPLA, children with the SPLA went to a camp, they produced the SPLA, and when you talk to them, you found that the men, most of them were orphans who had been thrown out by their families or who themselves were searching for refuge, and they came to the SPLA, which was the only institution available in southern Sudan, and um, were present in the camps. And uh, the SPLA commanders uh, said that they will hand over the children, but as long as we ensure that they will not become street children or uh, become in some way uh, uh, criminals, etc., that we have proper programs for them. As opposed to that, we may, I met LRA children, which are just, if you meet them, you know, just be shocked. There is absolutely no light in their eyes from years of abuse. Uh, the, the, the marked contrast is really quite uh, remarkable. Uh, and these uh, children talk to us of terrible uh, abuse, both sexual and others. Uh, then uh, I think with regard to these children associated with armed groups, the great challenge then is the reintegration programs for them, not only to get them released, but to make sure that the UN and the governments come through with programs for these children. Um, the second issue is in the LRA areas of Yambio. The humanitarian actors are also requesting two things that UNMIS and UNAMID, that their protection of civilian mandate be strengthened in these areas. The structure, the configuration and resources be given so that they can provide that kind of protection. They also are call for a regional effort by UN agencies uh, to deal with the LRA problem. Uh, when we went to Yambio and um, in some of those, you can feel the terrible damage done by the LRA presence in those areas. The third uh, area challenge is the intertribal conflicts uh, in southern Sudan. 370 children, as you know, were abducted. We were told that this is a practice associated with cattle raiding, but has become a terrible uh, practice with the presence of small arms. We d there are all kinds of anthropological theories as to the cause of these ab abductions. So UNICEF is conducting, going to conduct a study really to look into what is the basis of these abductions. But until then, we managed to have a discussion with the governor um, uh, of Jonglai province uh, to, uh, to push for um, th that they be disarmed, these groups, uh, that there be dialogue with tribal leaders to end this practice uh, and to ensure that these children are reintegrated. I want to also mention that the shrinking of humanitarian space, especially in Darfur, continues so that the most humanitarian actors are confined to, to the, to the Al-Fasha and the big cities. One child protection officer, one of the persons who collect information for us, is one of those who was kidnapped in Darfur. And so I made an appeal for her release. Uh, but um, there seems to be, uh, they don't want to use force. And of course, uh, we cannot pay ransom, so there is an issue. But, I pe but we continue to appeal for her release. I think in this whole shrinking of humanitarian space, we have to be more imaginative on how we deliver basic services uh, in this kind of environment. Uh, there's also the issue of the IDP camps in Darfur. We met with leaders and youth and children. Uh, I must say that um, they complained constantly about this lack of security around the IDP camps and urged us to provide better security. 
and they pointed to the constant recruitment of children from the camps, both by the Chadian opposition groups as well as JEM. Um, uh, and I must say, when talking to the young people of the camps, uh, they're, they're very young, they seemed quite militant, and one wonders what, whether there are programs and strategies uh, for them uh, in the future. Finally, as you know, the death penalty for children, uh, even though it's not strictly in my mandate, at least the GEM, um, well, the six people from GEM who were given the, the death, six, six children from GEM who were given the death penalty is uh, an area that I was advocating for. Uh, and uh, so uh, the government medical panel has found that four of them, they say, are not, uh, were not children when the crime was committed. So there seems to be some controversy. But I was, the Minister of Justice assured me that he will not execute these children. I don't know whether they live up to it, but he, he uh, assured me that they will not, they may sentence, but they will not execute. So thank you.